Hi everybody, welcome to NetCore Conference. I am Riccardo Zamana. I cover the role of IoT Business Unit Manager at BinTech in Italy. And today I will talk about Azure Cache and so the blue version of Redis and the rising star with the version 6. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the sponsors. So I say thank you to Microsoft, Lean Concepts, Avenade, Dyna Hosting, Avaris, Intellequia, Inizia, Encamina, Verne, and Sessionize.com. Today, this is the agenda. So during this session, we'll answer to five questions. The first is, why is Redis more than a cache? The second, when can we use the real Redis? So the real meaning, and the real, which is the real usage of Redis. Third question is, where can be Redis hosted? So, which are the many ways that you can find an Azure and Azure Marketplace in order to install, develop, test, and go to production with a Redis cluster? Fourth, how can we develop with Redis? So, for example, which is the good, the, the good client in order to, to use Redis, which are the semantics regarding performance when we deal with Redis, and many other questions. Last question is, what are the tools regarding management in order to talk with Redis, like SQL Server, for example? Okay, so let's start. What is Redis? Redis is not a cache. Redis is a data structures server. And everybody of us knows about Redis, but probably most of us consider it only as a cache, a key value cache, or in some case, a sort of a temporary buffer about data or a temporary queue management system but Redis in my opinion is more than that because it is a multitude of data structures that can be served together within a unique environment a unique infrastructure so for example we can provide time series databases within Redis and in the same instance of Redis uh, a Redis cluster, for example, we can deal with the streaming architectures using Redis, and we can deal with the PubSub broker or uh, queue management systems or hyperlog logs and so on, all embedded in one single instrument. Uh, when we talk about Redis, we have to understand initially which is the right way to communicate to communicate with him and uh, so we have to deal with uh, the Redis client so imagine that when you talk with Redis even if you are using a, a sort of SDK in C Sharp or in Python uh, under the hood you are talking with Redis using a sort of uh, uh, concatenation of strings in order to build up a simple command and this command is executed into the command line. Uh, when we talk about Redis, we are talking about a simple TCP-based socket server and with a simple protocol with a well-specified command, unique command, with many options. Somebody make a, a sort of a misunderstanding uh, judging uh, Redis only 
as a, a normal cache because we can deal with Redis as a sort of multimodal database uh, for example such as Cosmos DB so we can deal with key value but also with document based NoSQL database or graph based uh, based uh, database within the single installation of Redis. Redis is a memory database but can be uh, configured with persistence and even if you have configured the persistence the performance uh, about uh, uh, slow latency or um, amount of operation per second is very 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 high and so is in memory but is very faster so for in order to take in order to give you an example a single node of redis installed in the smallest virtual machine uh, b2s virtual machine measure can perform a single node okay can perform more than 60,000 60,000 operation per second with uh, a latency that is around uh, uh, 25 milliseconds what are the main features of Redis? Redis uh, has got a common line list there are more than uh, 160 commands when you talk about Redis, you are talking about data types. So there are three strings, lists, set, sorted sets, hash tables, and so on. In order to think in the right way, you have to think uh, with a sort of a pair in which you can find the first value of the pair, that is the key, and as the value you can find not a string, but a data structure. It can be considered a PubSub engine also, but the more uh, important thing uh, when you deal with Redis is that we can, we can configure it using a single config file. And so the configuration and uh, uh, learning curve is not so high, for example. Even if Redis is a single-threaded software, in the new version, so in the version 6, uh, the, the operation between Redis and uh, disk storage is not single-threaded operation, so we can deal in order to store many information at the same time with a multi-threaded process. It supports transactions, it supports encryption in the new version, so we can have a totally encrypted TLS based encrypted channel of buffering, for example. It supports replication, so you can distribute nodes of Redis toward many networks. So, in, in, for example, in a hybrid network between on-premise installation and cloud installation, in a replication manner. When is it useful? Uh, in, many in many contexts, uh, in my personal experience, I found Redis as a useful tool in order to get uh, uh, snapshots Okay, of data, for example, uh, uh, in the IoT world, we can use Redis in order to enrich streaming data during the streaming process. And uh, for example, any payload, every payload that can be produced on the field can be enriched during the, the streaming process. We use a sort of uh, uh, dynamic cache, so uh, when, I, when I say dynamic, I say that this cache can be updated from uh, uh, other 
yeah. processes and uh, every key in the cache uh, can be associated with an hash, uh, a hash value, so uh, um, a dictionary okay, of properties, for example. But uh, I've used the Redis, for example, as a sort of uh, message queue engine. So considering uh, every value for every key as a sort of uh, left push and uh, right pop queue. Uh, but we have to keep in mind that Redis can be used as a sort of session storage. So we, in Redis we have the, the time to leave attribute within uh, every single key and so we can uh, classify information about, for example, uh, uh, user sessions in your in our um, web uh, e-commerce, e okay, for example, and we can store all the, the sessions within uh, uh, with Redis. But you can deal with Redis in many many use cases. And for example, one of my colleagues that we, that uh, works in the machine vision uh, um, group in my company. Uh, he uses Redis with uh, Redis Gears, that is, that is a sort of uh, plugin, uh, and uh, he uh, transmits images to Redis and process all the images uh, using uh, OpenCV within Redis. And yes, it is a cache also. <laughs> Why I didn't like it before? As many of us, it was difficult to me to have a sort of dialogue with it because of the absence of uh, um, graphical user interfaces, for example, uh, absence of documentation, uh, absence of uh, examples within uh, GitHub. And uh, today, uh, the situation is very different. Oh, for example, the installation was not very clear because there was a, a website that uh, in which you can find uh, there is a website in which uh, you can find uh, the version six of Redis. But when you when you search for it in order to install it into uh, Windows, for example, you probably will uh, be redirected to a particular. Um, GitHub account, and you will find only the 5.0 version. And uh, until January uh, 2021, on Azure, there was the 4.0 version. So it was not clear to me which was the, 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 the real version to, in order to learn it. Okay? And uh, today, for example, you know, in Windows today, there is the WSL. And so with the, subs the Linux subsystem, you can uh, install Redis uh, using Linux. And for example, in, in order to, to manage it, uh, today, there is a, a very, very well formatted documentation in order to build up easily uh, HA and backups. But the most important news for me is uh, uh, Redis Insight, that is the official Redis CLI with the uh, graphical user interfaces and the Redis of University. Uh, the Redis of University is very, very important because it's an um, official place in order to be, uh, in order to be uh, trained about uh, all the, uh, the usages about Redis uh, and you can certify yourself as a Redis developer, for example. And yes, it's a cash also. Okay, let's talk about uh, the version 6. 
and uh, let's talk about about the three differences between uh, the open source version versus Redis Enterprise. Uh, at the moment, the mm, supported version of Redis is the 6.1.0 and uh, there is some problem about Windows version so I suggest you to uh, not to install Redis but to use Redis as uh, a Docker container it is uh, very very simple today uh, in, in order to deal with the right version and uh, on January there was a news about the Azure version of Redis uh, today we have a public preview of the version 6 version 6 introduces many new data structures and uh, introduces uh, another important thing that there is uh, the multi-threading uh, about uh, input outputs and uh, overall the most important feature is the TLS encryption and also the ACL authorization for every single key okay so it is very very uh, a very powerful instrument uh, in order to store and uh, make secure informations okay securely uh, stored and uh, accessed information on top of that uh, you know the rising of uh, Kubernetes and uh, there is an official Kubernetes operator in order to deploy clusters today is very very easy to deploy a uh, Redis cluster and uh, today with the op Kubernetes operator it is very simple to automate recovery when a node fails for example but which is the difference between uh, the open source version and the uh, enterprise version yeah the main difference is that when you deal with redis uh, you are dealing with the uh, uh, ram okay so r a m because your redis database even if it can be persisted into disk uh, must be queried only in memory okay so if you want to have a huge uh, Redis database you have to deal with a very very large amount of uh, memory okay in terms of RAM and uh, the main difference is that you can use uh, flash memory or SSD memory, so disk, okay, in order to query uh, the database. But this feature is uh, only uh, an enterprise uh, in the enterprise version. So the possibility to use disk as a sort of uh, available. Uh, amount of memory to uh, query uh, the database uh, after that you can have uh, more uh, in my opinion complicated uh, ways in order to uh, secure information and so the possibility to integrate uh, ACL with the uh, LDAP and after that there is another important question about replication so the possibility to synchronize uh, many clusters uh, that are positioned in different region in this way you can imagine redis as a sort of uh, uh, 
alternative version of Cosmos DB. Uh, you, you know, Cosmos is a famous database because it is a planetary database. And uh, I have to tell you that uh, Redis can be a planetary database also. But the difference is that uh, Cosmos DB you will pay a transaction and uh, in the Redis Enterprise version you will pay for the VM and it is uh, the payment based on compute and not transaction is uh, probably uh, less flexible but uh, more cost saving. From version 4.0 in Redis were introduced the Redis modules. So what are modules? Modules are add-ons, so a sort of uh, uh, plugin system that can extend Redis, giving Redis uh, more power in terms of uh, data structures. So in order to add data types and uh, in order to add commands you have to enable only enable uh, modules you can develop your own module there is a SDK if you are familiar with the uh, C language you can develop your own data structure and your own data type There are a huge amount of data models, but this image can give you a high level view about which are the main uh, alternatives uh, usages about Redis. For example, you can substitute Elasticsearch InclusDB, MongoDB, Neo4j, simply enabling four models. And we can go on with other enablements in order to have a graph database, probabilistic query and probabilistic filters, very, very useful when you have to, with, to deal with uh, uh, huge uh, data sets and simple questions and probably if you use TensorFlow or PyTorch in my company we use PyTorch for example we can uh, execute PyTorch uh, scripts within Redis and this is very very useful for us because we have a sort of uh, uh, script engine server that can host uh, many algorithms. Do you think, for example, that can Redis substitute Event Hub or Kafka? Yes, it can, with Redis Streams. Uh, Redis Streams is a, a module within Redis uh, that was built in order to give developers an uh, apping-only log approach in order to uh, think to Redis as a sort of uh, new kind of Kafka, okay? Uh, you know, PubSub uh, has got a problem, there is no history, so if you subscribe in a, uh, in, in a timestamp and then you publish data, okay, and after publishing data you subscribe with another subscriber, the new subscriber, don't receive the old data. Okay, so there is no history. And this was a problem. 
shorted sets. Oh, uh, very, very huge amount of memory. So, uh, it was not possible to deal with a uh, uh, huge amount of uh, uh, streaming data. Okay? Uh, Redis list, yes, good for uh, to be used as a queue, uh, but mm, it is impossible to have a sort of fun out paradigm right? because it is a queue. So uh, one produce and one consume. And so Redis stream can be uh, seen as a sort of uh, um, single producer and multiple cast consumers uh, mimic okay so you can interact with the same queue from multiple uh, consumers so from multiple clients um, you can uh, assign your generated ID, so the, the, the offset uh, attribute, okay, when you think Kafka, can be uh, overrided using uh, your own generated ID. Um, and uh, th there is a, a, it is a good choice if you want to um, read a stream and then come back to a, to a certain moment. Imagine that you can have a sort of a generated ID uh, and you can use, uh, for example, timestamp uh, dash the name of the, the stream, for example. And in order to read many, many times uh, the same stream, you can uh, read it using a consumer and then uh, stop consuming the stream and pointing a new consumer uh, to a well determined uh, timestamp dash and uh, the stream ID. And this is very useful, okay, in order to uh, replay uh, data. Redis JSON. Oh yes, Redis can be a NoSQL database, uh, document-driven database. Imagine that you can see Redis as a sort of tree data structure. And so we can deal with the sort of uh, JSON path uh, grammar in order to set and get uh, a key, for example, my JSON, the dot, uh, dot stands for root. After that, you can use a, a simple uh, JSON notation in order to set up. Uh, your uh, documents and then you can have pay attention you can get not all the entire value but only a property so dot attribute dot sub attribute uh, you can increment for example attributes numeric attributes with uh, a new value and so you can deal with uh, many operations that are more efficient than uh, the, the simple uh, uh, retrieving all the key and uh, convert the, the, the string value into a JSON object after that, modify the JSON object after that, uh, convert the JSON, object, the JSON object into a string and then make the set for the second time. Okay, so it's more efficient. Um, was necessary? Yes, absolutely, because there was the necessity to uh, have atomic field update, okay, or a single key retrieval. And uh, you 
can have these kind of uh, features within hash uh, type, but you can you cannot nest uh, attributes, and so you can uh, build up hierarchies. And uh, so it is very very useful to deal with uh, this JSON. Pay attention that the tree structure. Um, impacts um, with additional RAM. So uh, my advice is to use it as a documented database when you have to deal with the, um, small collections or not so nested documents. Redis time series, for me, was a news because in my mind there was only a time series database that was InfluxDB. I tried many of them and with uh, with the InfluxDB uh, I worked very well. Okay, but uh, in my opinion, my opinion is that you have to consider Redis time series also as a good uh, alternative. Uh, with the possibility to to be uh, scaled to cluster, for example, uh, without paying licensing. Um, and so using Redis time series model is very convenient. Uh, you know, uh, what is the time series? It is a time to value, time and value uh, are a pair and uh, you can have uh, arrays of pair and you have series and so and uh, the important most important quality quality uh, about uh, ready system series is that you can uh, configure automatic series that are filled with uh, formulas during the ingestion of other series. I make you an example. Imagine that you have a series and you have a payload stream that fill Redis with uh, temperature values and timestamp values, obviously. And you can configure Redis to generate a parallel uh, series with a formula, for example, uh, the average measure uh, every five minutes of uh, the values that you can find into uh, alpha okay, or beta series. And so you can think to Redis. Uh, to a sort of uh, as a sort of uh, uh, growing uh, time series database in which you have uh, a raw data series, for example, with uh, a TTL setting, uh, and with the possibility to build up. Uh, automatically new series with the uh, aggregated values so average minimum maximum uh, and so on remember that we are to redis time series there was a tricky way to use redis as time series database that was a very very complicated way using sorted set I don't want to waste your time with this long story. Imagine that you can have now the possibility to have a, a inference DB alternative um, with a very high performance. This is a very, very uh, new data set. Uh, probably is a bit complicated to understand how useful 
uh, it can be when you deal with uh, uh, data analysis within large data set. Uh, Redis Bloom uh, is a probabilistic data structure. So, for example, the question could be uh, is there something that contains the attribute with value uh, recover? The response uh, can be no or probably, but the no is uh, uh, database, the, the Redis database is sure about no or maybe. Okay, so you can use filters in order to have uh, uh, rapidly determine if uh, an element or an attribute is uh, present or uh, or not. Okay, imagine that you have to. Uh, deal with very very large data sets within Redis uh, with the small data set is uh, unuseful um, but you can have a sort of blue filter so uh, a sort of query within the data set or you can use crucial filter that is a sort of uh, um, filter in order to delete uh, in elements okay and uh, you can use other uh, algorithms for example in order to calculate frequency of elements uh, in samples and this is very important in order to uh, validate thresholds for example when you deal with the process data in the IoT and uh, you can easily calculate frequency of events that are outside the thresholds within series or for example in order to have a classification of uh, values uh, when you deal with series you can use for example top k okay in order to to have a sort of a summary of the data uh, to go fast in order to go faster with all these modules that are part of the Redis 6.0 um, another important uh, module is Redis search Redis search stands for a sort of uh, query engine in order to query data, content, documents within Redis and uh, the capability of this module is to indexing okay, modules uh, not starting from zero but in the incremental way so even if you have a stream of data that comes into Redis with uh, a fast velocity okay, you can at the same time continue, uh, continuously index uh, documents within Redis and so you are capable to uh, query or to um, for example make full, search, uh, full, full text searches um, this module can be uh, installed in a sharded way so when you have um, Redis shards you can uh, um, you can horizontally scale also the Redis search and so you have you can have uh, partitioned indexes and you can have uh, you can have a greater speed okay and another important thing is the SLA SLA of a searching engine with five nines availability uh, maintaining uh, performances is a very rare feature 
Oh, another important thing is a fuzzy, fuzzy search. Um, so you can implement your autocomplete suggestion. And uh, in this way, Redis search uh, can uh, embed into the single Redis instance the uh, a real uh, and uh, very useful uh, search engine. Okay, so let's talk about Redis on Azure. First, which is the Azure proposition about Redis? Uh, on Azure, you know, you have many ways in order to use Redis from uh, infrastructure as a service to Kubernetes to Azure Container instances or um, Redis Cache as a platform as a service. Mm, but first of all, I would like to introduce you uh, which is the Microsoft uh, vision about Redis. Uh, you know, uh, on Azure, you can find uh, uh, many patterns in order to, to develop uh, in the cloud way. One of them is the cache side pattern and um, communication uh, of Microsoft uh, in front of uh, the Redis offering is uh, first of all is the right object to implement cache side pattern. So um, you can uh, cache database uh, results and you can cache session states or set contents and uh, you can use this kind of facility in order to maintain uh, low latency using the scale out feature of Redis when you uh, evolve your SKU to clean and uh, the other important usage uh, of Redis uh, with the uh, platform as a service alternative is to use it as a message broker in order to um, use it as a uh, signaler uh, routing channel system. And uh, another important usage, for example, is the possibility to uh, link together um, with, for example, a private link, okay, so within a protected uh, network, hybrid network, you can link an on-premise installation with uh, a sort of active-active uh, installation measure. And from version 6, uh, this uh, uh, data uh, link, okay, so that data in transmit, uh, sorry, data in transit, um, it deals with TLS encryption. But the, the sad story is that at the moment uh, only the enterprise offering uh, can enable uh, Redis uh, modules, uh, Redis time series, Redis Bloom and Redis search. Remember that Redis stream is part of Redis, for example. Um, probably in the future, uh, there will be a huge amount of modules, but all these modules will be uh, available only in the enterprise offering. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can use them using other ways, for example, using APS. Uh, so, which is the uh, cloud spending story du during uh, development phase, testing phase and production phase? Uh, now, I tell you my experience. Uh, for me, it, it is important to, to start with all the instruments. So, uh, giving Redis gives me the freedom of uh, using one single uh, object 
and I can install it uh, on my personal computer or I can install for my solutions in uh, on-premises on, on situation and I can use it uh, on cloud in the same way but first of all I have to develop a solution and so I have to start small so I can use for example um, particular docker images uh, consider that on uh, uh, docker repository, official docker repository, docker hub you can find a particular version of Redis uh, with all the modules that are enabled okay and so you can start with your uh, workstation or you can start for example with the Azure container, an Azure container instance um, you can set the number of CPUs, the number of uh, gigabytes of RAMs and, and so on so you can have a very specialized installation and you can start developing with it when you have to test the application probably you, you need another kind of installation for example with a sort of uh, uh, replication okay, enabled uh, um, installation and probably the best way to do that without uh, spending a lot is to use AKS when you are in production and the business is good you can uh, uh, you, you can evolve uh, scaling for example globally with a replication feature that is uh, only uh, related to the Redis Labs okay, enterprise license uh, so the enterprise level of uh, Redis SKU uh, when, you, when, you when you speak about the platform as a service alternative and so only when you are uh, in production only when you have to deal with uh, global uh, scalability only when you want to go to bed earlier and without headache you can choose to the, the platform as a service offer. In order to uh, demonstrate all the various ways to install and use Redis, uh, this is a, a portion of a screen about uh, the platform as a service alternative. So you can use the four version or the preview. Uh, with the 6 version remember that uh, the, you have the um, traffic encryption and uh, the I.O. now is threaded and uh, you can have ACLs uh, within every single key okay remember that there are 5 uh, level, levels yes and you have the basic version the basic version is uh, mm, corresponding to one vm with no sla and the standard version is only two vm in replica and uh, the premium version is uh, the same as standard with better vm and also with the premium version you can uh, um, you can store information into disk so persist uh, the database uh, after that you have the Redis Labs versions okay so the enterprise and the enterprise flash uh, so uh, SAPA or SSD disks but I would like to remind you that you can have with this simple common okay one common uh, you can have um, ACA so Azure Container Instance with the already configured persistence uh, using the file share so you have to uh, previously uh, create an Azure storage account okay with the, the file um, a generic v2 uh, storage account so in which you can activate file sharing 
and uh, with this instruction okay uh, you can create um, completely um, persisted instance of uh, Redis but you can have something more uh, this is a standard installation we're using the AZ um, about Kubernetes but imagine that you can have it uh, using the, the, the web way using the portal after that you can use uh, these four um, assertions okay so primary service replica service primary deployment repl replica deployment in order to have a replicated cluster in four steps okay after that you can uh, enter into the, the cluster and uh, uh, control using the uh, Redis uh, in every uh, node because you can uh, scale out the, the replicas and uh, the, the only difference is, uh, um, is about the arguments okay so the primary is the primary and uh, you can have many replicas and the arcs arguments you have slave off, slave off and uh, after that uh, it, it uh, refers to the primary installation the primary name. and you can have uh, with the uh, uh, b2s okay very cheap grid machines a uh, completely replicated cluster uh, without a name I hope that you enjoyed uh, this session. Uh, I hope that you are very curious now about Redis usage. And um, I would like to say thank you to you, but thank you to the sponsors. So thank you to Microsoft, Play Concepts, Evernate, Dyna Hosting, Everis, uh, Intellequia, Elisha, uh, Encamina, Verni and uh, sessionize.com so thanks for watching and uh, go on with the uh, netcoreconf.com bye